Greetings once again to our viewing audience. It's a pleasure to be here to share with you the gospel of Jesus Christ. I greet you on behalf of Destiny Empowerment Global Ministries with Pastor Eloise Sainz and yours truly, Julian Armstrong. I want to get right into what I, I want to share today because of time. And I want to, I will have to do this in two parts, in three parts, a three part series concerning why Hollywood is going to hell. And as I said before, you can always go back and you can see um, last so you can follow on from part one of this message on Facebook on our Destiny Empowerment Global Ministries page or Julian Armstrong, that's J-U-L-L-I-A-N or J-U-L-L-I-A-N-C Armstrong on Facebook. So I want to get right into it so I can cover as much as possible because of this topic. I want to really um, get in depth into it and carry on for it from next week. Okay, so last week as I talk about, you hear me mention a lot of stuff. As I said, you will have to go back and see. But I want to continue on talking about um, how Satan, hallelujah, has knowledge and information based on your behavioral patterns, hallelujah, on your behavioral patterns, and you will, you will connect the two when you go and listen to uh, part one from next week, but for the sake of time, okay? Okay, so Satan, they cannot tell you when, you see, the thing is about it that we don't understand is that Satan did not know when many of you would have been saved, those who are born again. And when you were not living for the Lord and you were living your own way and doing your own thing, it seemed to have been an ease, no bother. Satan seemed to have no problems at all as long as you were not serving Christ. But as soon as people begin to talk about your, 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 your salvation and coming to Christ and, and about the great things that God will do with your life. Hallelujah. And what He wants for you and wants you to accomplish. Immediately, Satan began, began to call his demons together and they, they, they have a meeting and they say, Come. And they begin to take their notepads and their pens if they have such. And they begin to take notes concerning the strategies and the schemes and how they are going to stop you from achieving what God wants for you in your life. Hallelujah. This happened with Jesus. In the birth of Jesus when the angels appeared. Hallelujah. And they appeared to the shepherds while they were feeding, while they were shepherding their flock in the fields. The Bible says the angel appeared to them and the angel said a child will be born. Hallelujah. And the shepherds, when they received the information from the angel concerning this king, born as a baby in a manger, Jesus Christ. The Bible says they followed the star and they went and they came to Herod and they began to tell King Herod all about what this king and his purpose on the earth and from the time they told the king those things, hallelujah, the Bible says Satan began to plot, hallelujah, how he's going to destroy this baby coming into the earth, Jesus Christ, the King of kings and the Lord of lords. You see, Herod did not know, hallelujah, which child it was going to be. You see, Satan has to study the behavioral patterns of man. Hallelujah. He doesn't know everything. He's not omniscient. He's not all-knowing. He's not even omnipotent. He's not all-powerful. Hallelujah. God is all-powerful. Hallelujah. So you see what Satan did when the shepherds went. This because this is all under the influence of satanic, of Satan's purposes. So what he did, he said, we will kill all of the babies from two years old and older, from the time that he was born until the time the shepherds came to him. Hallelujah. Because he did not know which child it was going to be. Satan did not know. But he said, listen, just in case we missed it. Hallelujah. And this purpose began to be fulfilled. They said, let's kill all of the children from two years old and under. So that's how he operates. That's how Satan operates concerning the things that he tries to, to put in your way to stop you. Hallelujah. You see, what happened is that if Satan cannot, if he cannot stop, 
Hallelujah. You, what he will do, he will affect your environment. Oh my God. He will affect the space and the place from where you are in order to achieve his intent as he tried to do, to do with Jesus. Hallelujah. And that is why, my friend, you, you can't always be everywhere at the same time. You can't always be every place. You must know God's will for your life and God's purpose in his direction for your life. Hallelujah. So, the, the, Satan tried to affect the environment. And so what he did, as I said, in trying to kill the baby, and what it did, it caused Joseph and Mary, because they were attentive to the voice of God, hallelujah, they flee to Egypt, and they left Bethlehem and flee to Egypt, hallelujah, in order to be sustained, to sustain the baby, the, 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 the king of glory, Jesus Christ himself, born as a babe, hallelujah, you see, they listen to the voice of God and they flee to Egypt, hallelujah, to sustain. You see, it's just like Elijah. Hallelujah. Elijah was in Zarephath by the brook and God told him where he will be sustained. Hallelujah. Until it was his time to move on. And Joseph and Mary flee where God could take care of the child Jesus. Do you know where God wants you to be? my friend or are you just a christian that is just floating are you just a believer that is just floating or do you know where god has placed you because wherever god directs you and places you it is where he has placed that he has placed you in that environment to sustain and he has prepared things there for you to fulfill his purpose in your life and do you know where he wants you to be or are you just floating do you know why you are there? Mm. So that when things happen in your life, you will know what to do. Many believers, many people, when things happen, they don't know because they are not in the will of God. They don't know what to do. They don't know what to, they don't know how to gauge their way. Hallelujah. Out of those things. And they don't know if God is really speaking to them because they were never following his voice. They were just following what everyone was doing. Hallelujah. And what the world, the, 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 the image that the world says is the way to success. Ah, hallelujah. Do you know where God wants you to be? Hmm. Do you know God's will for your life? Listen to this. The devil does not wink at stupidity. Neither does God. If you think that many people think that they can play around in Satan's field without any effect to their life or consequences. But if they think, if you believe that way, my friend, you are strangely deceived. If you do not know where you are going, you will become a tool in the devil's hands. Ah. And all he will use you to do is to be distraction. You will be heading to a place of destruction and you will become destructive to other people's lives because you don't know God's will or where you're going. And he has given us his will in his word. You can know it. Hallelujah. Solomon, even in his Bethlehem stage, says some very great and powerful words. Here, what he says, Ecclesiastes chapter seven, verses seventeen. He says, "Do not be excessively, sorry, do not be be, be excel, sorry, at wickedness. Do not be a fool, or do not be foolish." He says, "Why should you die before your time?" So you see that your ignorance and some people's stupidity can take them out of this earth before their time. You know, many people say, I know when it's their time, it was God's time. No, sometimes you can die before your time because of ignorance. Ignorance is not a bliss. You can cut your life short or you can make your life very troubling if you don't know where you're going. I told you before, there was a, a, a testimony that I heard before of a, of a pastor and his wife who had traveled to the continent, some continent in Africa. And they went and they bought this, some artifacts or ornament of some object of some kind. You know, innocently they went and purchased this thing. 
and they took it back to their home in the United States and they placed this ornament or this object, uh, this sculpture, whatever it was, and they placed it in their home. And when they placed it in their home, after a period of time, not too long, his wife, he says, got sick. And it says she was having terrible headaches and all sorts of things were happening to her. And they took her to doctor after doctor, you know, to, to test and see what is going on. And they could not identify what was happening. And it says it's only after they were in prayer, then God revealed to him and showed him and, and draw his attention, drew his attention to the ornament or the object that they bought from Africa. Now, don't get me wrong. I'm not saying all artifacts and things that you have are, are, are have any satanic ties to them or anything. I'm not saying that. Of course not. Okay? But as he says, when he went and researched this article, this artifact, and he saw what it is used for, in, 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 and, the, and the symbolism that it have, the occultic symbolisms, and what they use for in their practices. Hallelujah. It's then he realized... He said, when they took this, this thing and they took it and they smashed it up and destroy it, he says it's then that everything just left his wife immediately and she was well. And he said this, he said that thing, he says, was a portal for demonic spirits, hallelujah, to come and go and to afflict his wife. So you see, you can be born again, but because of ignorance, you can afflict yourself. You may not be possessed, but if you, you tie yourself to things and you become overexposed to things and you hold them as your own, hallelujah, you give the enemy sometimes legal rights to come and afflict your life, hallelujah. So it was a portal. You see, the devil may not get you directly, but he knows how to indirectly affect your life. You see, the enemy can manipulate surroundings. Ah, hallelujah. And he can use anything. Hallelujah. Remember that Satan is not a human being. He is an angelic being. Remember the Bible says in Ezekiel, I think it's Ezekiel chapter 28, verses 14 to 17, that Satan is the anointed cherub. You see, Satan also has an anointing. <laughs> you must realize that. And he anoints his people also. You see, many people in church, we want to be anointed, but understand that Satan also anoints people. And when Satan was cast out of heaven, remember, Satan did not lose that anointing. And he did not lose his wisdom. Ah, oh my God. So he's still using it today. He still has that angelic power to influence things. Hallelujah. You can see that, as I said, Ezekiel chapter 28, verses 14 to 17. Hallelujah. He influenced people with that anointing. And I will show you today a little bit, a bit of what Hollywood is used as a platform to change the world through using that same anointing that Satan is using. Remember the Bible says he is the God of this world. So I want you to hear now some, what some people are saying who were, these were some men and women who were commenting on this very well-known um, person, um, Hollywood, sorry, we know him very well, um, Nick Cannon, Nick Cannon. And they were commenting on, a, on something that he was discussing concerning the, the, the demonic things over tones in Hollywood, but he was not sharing everything in its completeness. And these were some people. Now, I don't know maybe what they're saying is true or not, but I think it's very, it, 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 it gives some thought that you should, you should give some thought to what they're saying. And here what one person says. He says, I'm a military veteran and currently in ministry. And I will deal with this more on the next, on the third part of this series. Why Hollywood is going to hell. And I will get more in detail concerning the atmospheric domain and the airwaves and the space from where Satan operates from. He says, I'm a military veteran and currently in ministry. He says, when I was in San Diego with the military, we got past a few of us. He says, sorry, we got a pass and few of us were able to go to Hollywood. 
California. And he says this. He says, as soon as I entered the city, he says, there was a heaviness and a very dark cloud or spirit, he says, that seemed to over to, to be over the city. To hover over the city, he said. He says, I could not wait to leave. I am a minister, he says, with a ministry in dealing with the supernatural. And this city, he says, is evil. He says, so canon is right. Another person says, I believe him. I went on a three-day vacation trip to Los Angeles, he says, and I felt the energy. He says, it was weird. The energy that he felt. Oh, my God. Even those that are not born again know it. Hallelujah. Sense it. He says, another person says, 10 months ago, it's been three months I've been here. And I can feel the dark and demonic energy. Another person says, I stayed in Hollywood and all I felt was a bad energy. Mm, my God. Another person said, I just moved to California only four weeks ago. They said, um, I was hired for a job in Hollywood. <laughs> That's what they call it. Hollywood. And he says, the person says, I quit after one day because every girl in the building had a dark and negative energy. She says, it's pretty much like there were zombies and the hiring manager, he says, seemed as if she was programmed to not care about what was going on. And all she did was smile at everything, even if it was not funny. <laughs> it sounds like what you're watching those pictures on movies, isn't it? Hallelujah. One more. One person says, I once drove to LA and it was gross. The air was polluted. Ah, uh, it's significant. I'm going to talk about that next week. He says, the air, the air. Uh, I want you to keep that in your mind as we prepare for next week. He says, the air was polluted. It was hot and people kept cutting us off. I believe what Nick Cannon said. He says, Hollywood is hell. Now, as I said before, these could all be coincidences. Who knows? But it's still people, it's still people's personal experiences. You must understand that Satan is the God of this world. And he can put his spirit in anyone, hallelujah, who opens themselves to him. And even things that are objects, hallelujah. You ever watch musicians and you see musicians who are able to move objects. Listen, there's magic tricks and they are magician, magicians, real magicians. And they are those who do tricks. The real magicians, I don't pronounce it properly, forgive my, my accent. The real magicians are the ones who use dark powers. When you see people moving things like that, it doesn't, it is not just tricks. I'm telling you, I was even told this by a magician himself, that those who do the real magic, not those who just do tricks, they have to use some form of power, hallelujah, to be able to do what they do. So be, be cognizant of that. Mm. Revelation chapter 13. Let's, let, me, let me show you and back it up from the word of God. Revelation chapter 13 verses 14. And hear what it says. And he deceived them. Talking about the false prophet. Or, or what the Bible called the second beast. He deceives them that dwell on the earth. By the means of those miracles. Which he had power to do. Ah, in the sight of the beast saying to them that dwell on the earth that they shall make an image to the beast which had the wound by a sword and did live verses 15 and he had power the false prophet had power to give life unto the image of the beast my god the word there power uh, um, uh, means he, he was able to give life, means he was able to give pneuma, a spirit. Other translations will say he was able to give a spirit, hallelujah, to the beast, hallelujah. He was give, able to give a spirit, sorry, to the image, so that the image of the beast shall both speak, the Bible says, and cause them that will not worship the image of the beast shall be killed. You see that? The Bible says Satan was able to give, hallelujah, this false prophet under the, under the unction, the anointing of Satan, hallelujah, was able to give a spirit to the image so that the image could both speak 
Hallelujah. To people. So Satan can get his way into objects. Hallelujah. Hmm. He can put his spirit into human beings and non-human beings. Those things that are enamored um, objects. Hallelujah. Non, non, non-human things. Human and non-human, he can do it. Hallelujah. I'm not here to glorify him. Remember the Bible says, hallelujah. And you understand this. This is what is happening. Because what, what happened there is this, he was able to give a spirit to the image. And the understand that Hollywood is an image. And anything that creates an image opposed to God, God revealed and showed me and my spirit. You know, anything that creates an image opposite to him, he's able to, Satan is able to give a spirit to. That anything that is opposed, any image that is opposed to God, Satan is able to give an image to. The Bible says in 1 John 2.15, Hallelujah. Love not the world, neither the things that are in the world. If any man love the world, the love of the Father is not in him. For all, all, it means whatsoever or whosoever that is in the world. Now hear what he says. These are the things he's talking about that are in the world. The lust of the flesh, the desire of fleshly gratification or the... Or fleshly gratification, or the lust of the eyes, desire for possessions, and the pride of life, worldly arrogance, is not of the Father, but is of the world. And the world, he says, passes away. The world and its desires pass away, and the lust thereof. But he that doeth the will of God abides forever. Do you know the will of God? It's only those that know the will of God that will abide forever. Do you know the will of God? There are three spirits that drives the world. You see there that John is talking about. And these are the same spirits that were in the beginning in the garden with Adam and Eve. Hallelujah. You see, Satan is only repackaging. But the spirits are the same today that they were 2,000 years ago. In Genesis chapter 3 verses 5. Mm. And these are the three spirits that's, that Hollywood is using. It's why Hollywood is going to hell. And this is what they thrive off of, the three things. And hear what it says in Genesis chapter 3 verses 5. And Satan says, For God knoweth that in the day that you eat thereof, then your eyes shall be opened, and ye shall be as gods, knowing good and evil. And when the woman saw that the tree was good for, for, for food, fleshly lusts, and it was pleasant to the eyes, lust of the eyes, and a tree to be desired to make one wise, pride of life, wanting to be as gods. She took up the fruit thereof and did eat and gave unto her husband with her, and he did eat. You see that? It's the same three spirits. And this is what is driving Hollywood. How does Satan move the spirit from one place to another into cultures? How? Through media. And I'll talk about that next week. Through the medium. That is what the media means. A medium. The media means. It, it, it's, it's television. is a medium. It's a means of transporting messages to your spirit and your soul. Hallelujah. It has good purposes, yes. But the enemy of your soul uses what is in the world. The things that are in the world. Whatsoever. Inanimate objects. And human objects. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So what are the three things media promotes? Money, possessions, sex, lust. Hallelujah. Pride. You can see it. You can have it all. The American dream. As if only America can dream. Hallelujah. So all of our cultures are affected, are influenced by this Hollywood spirit. Even some churches, they are Hollywood churches. There are some people who will not go unless they are lights, camera, and action. Lights, camera, action. That is what it is. Hallelujah. And our boys and girls are being taken out of the church. Affected or afflicted. Hallelujah. Influenced by these things. Recently, I just spoke to some person there and told me their daughter who grew up in church. Hallelujah. Good friend of mine. 20, only a few. I don't want to mention because I don't want anybody going researching. Good friend of mine. And then the daughter who was singing gospel all of her life. And then all of a sudden, they don't want to be singing the gospel anymore. They don't believe certain things of the Bible. Huh? You see? And, and, and then they want to be in a relationship, she says, with another girl. 
You see what is happening? And all the time, it's surprise her mom that these changes could have taken place so suddenly. You see, you have to understand when they spend 15 hours being taught on social media in their rooms on these gadgets. You think that 45 minutes in church of teaching can do anything? No, my friend. You have to be very cognizant of what is happening in this world. Now my time is going, so I just want to close with this scripture. Revelation chapter 3 says, To the messenger of the church in Sardis, write, The one who has the seven spirits of God and the seven stars, I know what you are doing, I know you are being alive, but you are dead. Be alert and strengthen the things that are left, which are about to die, and know that thy actions are incomplete before God. So remember what you have received and heard, obey and repent. If you don't, are you not alert? I will come like a thief and you will not know when I will come to you. Understand this, my friend, as I close. It said to be watchful or be alert because this church did not realize that Satan had crept in to its artificial life and the real life that comes from God they had ignored. He said, enemies are looking at you from the outside and they say, wow, you are so alive, but you are, you are active, you are vibrant. But Jesus said the life that you have does not come from me. You are dead. Listen, there's an imitation life and Hollywood is selling, selling us and we are bringing it even into our, our set around our, our, our settings. Hallelujah. I wish I had more time, but my time is out. I want to continue on this next week. I want to encourage you and let you know, listen, we need to be cognizant. We need to take our children and begin to pray for our children. Pray for them as never before because there's an onslaught after them. Hallelujah. To take their souls, pray for them, anoint them, seal them. If you don't seal them, something else will seal them. Hallelujah. So I pray that you were blessed today. And stay tuned until next week. i sorry I didn't have much to, to uh, I didn't have the time to give you some more of what I want. But I will continue next week. And if I have to do part four, I will. Because I think that this is very pertinent. This message is timely for today. So until then, God bless you. Do have a great week. And may God keep you and cause his face to shine upon you in Jesus' name. Amen.